Seatbelt. Check. Backpack? Check, check. All right, snoozer. Sending in three, two, one. And we're off. Autopilot activated. So where are we going today? Looks like it's time for our three hints, snoozer. Hint number one, it's indoor and outdoor. Hint number two, it's cold and warm. And hint number three, we just went there last time. We're going back to the zoo? That's it, snoozer. Yes, we are going back to the Buffalo Zoo, learning about gorillas today. That's right. Yes, today's going to be all about tropical animals. We've got gorillas, but also animals like parrots, sloths, you know, animals that live in rainforests. What is a rainforest? Is that just a forest, but when it's raining? No, no. Actually, a rainforest is a forest with tall, mostly evergreen trees and a high amount of rainfall. Rainforests are Earth's oldest living ecosystems, with some surviving in their present form for at least 70 million years. In fact, let's ask Zot for even more information. Hey Zot, can you give us some information about rainforests? Zot, the robot at your service. Activating, excited voice. 30 million species of plants and animals live in rainforests. The rainforests hold more than two thirds of the world's plant species. Many of the most loved foods on earth come from rainforests. Rainforests have a canopy of dense branches and leaves. Goodbye. Thanks, Ot. So rainforests are incredible, and they house some of the most amazing plants on Earth. That's why it's such a shame that rainforests are endangered. Endangered? What? Why? Yeah, rainforests are one of the most endangered habitats on planet Earth, and one of the most vulnerable to deforestation. Each year, 140,000 square miles of rainforests are destroyed. It's not good. That makes me very sad. Why are they being destroyed? Well, the main reason, Snoozer, is actually people. People are cutting down the trees for logging, for mining, for farming, and industrial development. When you cut down the trees, they can turn that wood into logs and sell it. And in the space left over, they build farms, they build other buildings, and they dig. I wish we lived close to a rainforest. Then we could help them. Absolutely, Snoozer. But right now, the best thing we can do is check out books about rainforests and learn more about them. And that will lead us to knowing more about what we can do to help them out. And maybe when we talk to experts like people at the zoo, we can learn even more. Let's pull up the map. We are headed for Rainbow Way. Once we cross through, we'll be right at our destination, the Buffalo Zoo. Along the way, we're going to check in with Dr. Dan for a health tip. And your teacher, Mrs. Hamilton, is going to do a gorilla craft with you. Yay! I want to do that! Oh, snoozer! Here come the books! Awesome. Let's check out a few. What'd we get? Here you go, Snoozer. The One and Only Ivan by Catherine Applegate in Memoirs of the Parrot by Devin Sillian. Great. So the One and Only Ivan is about a gorilla who lived in captivity inside of a mall. He lives with an old elephant named Stella and a stray dog named Bob. When a new elephant named Ruby is brought to the Big Top Mall, Ivan makes a promise to Stella, the old elephant, that he will make a better home for Ruby than the mall. What will happen next? Will Ivan get away from the mall? Will he find a new home? Well, we'll just have to read and find out. This book has great characters in it. I really enjoy when stories are written about animals talking to each other. Of course, in real life, animals don't speak, at least not the way that humans speak to each other. But in stories, authors can imagine animals do speak the way humans talk. Many animals are not happy when they're stored in very small spaces. In this story, the animals dream of going to a zoo, where there are people to take care of them in a larger space. So you learn a bit about the animals when you read this story. I think this is a great book for older readers, and for younger readers who have someone to read to them. I like gorillas. They are kind of like people. 
But they don't talk, they don't wear clothes, and they do silly things. Gorillas are one of my favorite animals. Now, human beings should generally stay away from them, but gorillas are very peaceful, and they would only attack if they felt very threatened. And that's a good thing because gorillas are incredibly strong, much, much stronger than human beings. But much like all other primates, gorillas are highly intelligent and very, very interesting to observe. Can we make the gorilla craft now? Absolutely, Snoozer. Let's bring on Mrs. Hamilton and create your gorilla craft. Hi, Snoozer. It's craft time. Are you ready? Of course. Oh, that's great. Well, today we are going to be making a monkey. And that monkey looks like this. So, we need these two sheets. And we need to start cutting. So, I guess I'm going to start on this side with the bottom part of the monkey. Okay, well next thing we're gonna need is some glue, and then we're just gonna assemble. I like to put it together so I know just where everything is going to go. Looks pretty self-explanatory though. So I need the little monkey face and the monkey eyes. Okay, let's get started. So I'm gonna put a little glue right here so I can add the head. Okay. Woo! You wait your turn. Okay. Then I'm gonna flip this part over. We're gonna add that. It's gonna be the monkey's face. Make sure you get it along the outside, the edge. One eye. And two eyes. Oh my goodness. I love it. It looks like a monkey. How does yours look, snoozer? I love it! Oh, I feel like I'm at the zoo. All right, well, I hope you had a great time making that monkey, and I'll see you all next time. Bye! And now, the question of the week. What is the best thing you have ever tasted? Pizza? Steak? That's a hard question. Candy corn. Candy corn? Okay. Noodles with butter and cheese on. My favorite treat is a bomb pop. Tea! I would say... Mac and cheese, and also um cheese and spaghetti sauce. On the best thing I ever tasted is pizza. Thanks for joining us for the question of the week. <laughs> wow, snoozer, that's amazing. I love all the work you put into that snoozer, and I like how you made him green. Excellent work. Thank you! Oh, I love him so much! Hey, what about the other book? You're right, the other book! Well, this book is much shorter. It is called Memoirs of a Parrot by Devin Shillian. It's a story about a parrot who is documenting what happens at a pet shop. That means the parrot is observing people and keeping a journal. Just like some kids have diaries and they write down what happens in their day. This story is very funny because it's all about the parrot reacting to all the strange people and what they say. The parrot doesn't understand what the people are talking about and what they are saying when they come in. Eventually, someone buys the parrot and he leaves the shop. Then the parrot is talking about the man who buys him. At first, he doesn't like his owner at all. But what happens next? Does the parrot change its mind? Well, snoozer, we have to read this book and find out. This book is hilarious, and I love all the illustrations in it. Whoa! Yeah, parrots are one of the rare animals that have the ability to hear somebody say something and then repeat it back to them. In fact, I'm really interested in learning a bit more about parrots. Hey, Zot, can you give us some information about parrots? Zot, the robot at your service. 
There are around 372 different parrot species. Most parrots live in tropical areas. Parrots have curved beaks, strong legs, and clawed feet. Parrots are often brightly colored. Parrots are believed to be one of the most intelligent bird species. Goodbye. Wow, parrots are cool. I told you. And I also heard parrots can live up to 80 years. Whoa, that's as old as some grandpas. Yeah, pretty impressive. I want to meet a parrot. Well, you know what, Snoozer? I know a toy that brings together all kinds of amazing tropical animals. It was a toy called Gorilla Mountain from Fisher Price. It was released back in 2009. It features all kinds of tropical animals on a mysterious jungle terrain. What is that colorful little guy? That's a chameleon, another tropical animal, and a lizard. What chameleons are most known for is that they can change colors. Now most people think that's to blend in and hide from predators, but chameleons actually change colors when they are excited. Their color change is more based on mood than to hide. They're already masters of disguise because the color that they naturally are fits their environment. Most chameleons are green, so they spend a lot of time in leaves or in grass. Oh! But how do they change colors? Well, scientists believe that chameleons can rapidly change color by adjusting a layer of special cells nested within their skin. Beneath their skin, they have these guanine crystals. By changing the space between the crystals, they change the wavelength of light off the crystals, which change the color of their skin. When we enter Gorilla Mountain, maybe we'll get a chance to see it up close. But it might be tricky. Remember, they're really good at hiding. Snoozer, we are headed into the Toy Realm. Did you know? There are currently 264 known monkey species. The mandrill is the largest type of monkey, with adult males weighing up to 77 pounds. That's a big monkey! Apes are not monkeys! Sorry, King Kong! Don't eat me! Some monkeys live on the ground, while others live in trees! The library has tons of books about monkeys! Visit the library to learn more! Let's park here and take a look around. Let's see if we can find that chameleon. I wonder where he's hiding. <laughs> see, Snoozer, they're much more afraid of you than you are of them. Are you sure about that? Hey, look over there on the cliff. The chameleon. I want to go pet it. Come back here, little guy. Snoozer, don't do that. I just want to pet this cute little... Whoa! Snoozer! <laughs> Snoozer, I told you not to... What's wrong? The chameleon in my trunk. <laughs> oh, great. Now we're never going to find it. I'm sorry. I had no idea that thing was going to break. What a cheap toy! No, that platform is meant to collapse, but it's controlled by that red action point. Someone must have... Hmm... Something's going on. I don't know what. What was that? A door. Closing. I know this toy. There's a secret door between the gorilla's legs. Someone just went inside. Who? Don't know. This can only be opened with the red action point. But we aren't Imaginex toys, so we can't access it. We need to find another way in. And let's make sure we stay over here. Whoa! Over here, Snoozer! Someone doesn't want us here? Gotta go! Gotta go! Boss is waiting! Boss is waiting! Snoozer, what did I tell you parrots can do? Uh... Oh! They can talk! They can learn words, and sometimes they repeat sounds and words they hear. Oh! Gotta go! 
boss is waiting. Someone is doing something back there, and they have a boss waiting for them. Oh no! We have to find out who they are! Look! There's an entrance behind the waterfall! <laughs> oh no, just what we don't need. Checkers! That isn't so bad! It's a cute little hippo! We haven't talked about hippos yet. Snoozer, the thing is... They're soft and squishy and very peaceful! Inaccurate. Hippos are agile and aggressive. Hippos are the largest mammal killer in the animal kingdom. Thanks. Thank you very much, Zot. Oh, dear! Well, the good news is, they only eat plants. Let's use this plant to get it away from the water. <laughs> Come on, snoozer! the famous gorilla of Gorilla Mountain. They've locked him up. They're leaving! Checkers, why are you grabbing my trunk? Snoozer, launch this at the truck. What was that? A tracking device. Now we'll know where they're going. Come on, let's go back to the van. Location, one mile east. Okay, so they're just a mile ahead, and they've stopped. I bet someone is coming to pick up the gorilla. We've got to save him. But how? They will see our van driving up. <laughs> Not today. You know how chameleons can change colors? Yeah. I'm going to wire this chameleon into the van and duplicate and then harness its guanine crystals. That will give the van the ability to change colors and blend into other surroundings. What? Don't worry, snoozer. It's completely harmless. Outcome successful. Let's go. Gentlemen, I see you've done the job. Yes, sir, we've captured the gorilla. Wonderful. Oh, what a genius I am. I'm going to take this gorilla back with me and sell it for one million and a half dollars. <laughs> right, are we getting payment? Oh, yes, as promised. Here is your toy, I mean, real treasure chest. <laughs> And now to claim my prize. What? Now! <laughs> no! I'll get you. What? How can I get you when you're invisible? I'll get you next time, Checkers the Inventor. <laughs> Count on it! Run along, little lizard! You're free! You too, pal. Shall we? Up to the zoo! Alright, back on the road. Ascending in three, two, one. How did Mr. Greedy Kid's bad guy get to the Gorilla Mountain? Well, David DeVita is a master thief. Remember, he stole my transporting technology and created a copy of my checkers pad. He's been tracking everywhere we've been going. And he wanted to kidnap that gorilla. We're going to have to find a way to stop him from taking things that don't belong to him. Yeah. Oh, the zoo! Oh my gosh, I forgot about the zoo. Yeah, we're going to be going to the zoo and meeting with gorillas. Real gorilla snoozer. But you know what? We've been talking a lot about going places and being outside. I think it might be a good time to ask Dr. Dan a health question all about keeping ourselves safe from the hot sun. Hi, Dr. 
Mr. Dan? We are going outside later. I wanted to ask about sunscreen and sun safety today. Wow, Snoozer. Well, it sounds like you and Checkers are going off for a great day of fun out in the sun. Now, I love spending time in the sun. Not only does that sunlight feel great and really make us happy, but it also causes a chemical reaction in our skin. When sunlight hits our skin, it causes it to release something called vitamin D. Vitamin D is incredibly important for a lot of things in our body, and we have to make sure we're always getting enough of it. A great way to do that is to spend a lot of time in the sun. Now, it's not quite that simple. Although it's really important to spend time outside, we have to make sure we're doing it safely. Too much sunlight can be very harmful to our skin. It can cause really painful sunburn and a lot of problems down the road, so we don't want to do it without carrying our sunscreen. Make sure we're always putting sunscreen on anytime we're going to be out in the sun. Even if it's going to be a little bit cloudy, we always have to wear sunscreen if we're going to be spending time outside. Other thing we always have to make sure we have is eye protection. We want to make sure we're wearing sunglasses or another form of eye protection if we're going to be spending a lot of time outside. And thirdly, if we're going to be spending a ton of time outside, you might want to wear a hat like this, especially for you and Checkers going on out on a fun adventure for the day. If we remember to always put on our sunscreen, always wear our hat if we need one, and have our eye protection on, we are good to go. Just make sure to always reapply the sunscreen anytime you get wet or every several hours at least. Oh, and Snoozer, do you remember when we were learning about the desert? Yes, I do! Yes, yeah, so never forget to always make sure we're drinking plenty of water if we're going to be spending time out in the sun and out in the heat. All right, Snoozer, well, I think I'm going to throw on some sunscreen and go get some sunlight myself. Thanks, Dr. Dan. Oh my gosh, Snoozer, we're at the rainbow! Wow, if we're gonna cross through Rainbow Way, we need to be wearing our safety suits. All right, Snoozer, get ready. Changing into our safety suits. All right, Snoozer, going through the rainbow. And now it's time for... The Joke of the Week! Why does the elephant use her trunk as a bookmark? Then she knows where she stopped reading! <laughs> it's the zoo ba dee doo ba -dee doo Well, we're here. Let's go inside and meet the gorillas. We're here to see the Western Lowland Gorilla. There's only 100,000 of them left on Earth. Hi, Mr. Gorilla! Check it out, Snoozer. They're vegetarians. They don't eat meat, so they eat plants throughout the day. It's amazing how big and strong they are, despite having a pretty light diet. Checkers, they're so peaceful. Don't let their massive size fool you. They're very calm. I thought they'd be much louder, but these gorillas are very quiet. All right, Snoozer, time to go. Nice to meet you. Wow, that was incredible. But before we end our day, how would you like to make one more stop at Hawk Creek Wildlife Center and meet with a real-life parrot. I'd love to! All right, Zot, take us to Hawk Creek Wildlife. Both of these birds are native to South America. They'd be found down in the rainforests there. So they're just two different species of macaw. So typically you're gonna find macaws in big flocks, typically of their own kind. So you would find a lot of blue and golds in one area and all together, and then you might find a lot of hyacinths in an area. And they're really important in the rainforest because they help to spread seeds 
to help replant the rainforest as they're flying around and they eat a lot of different fruits and nuts and everything like that and they don't digest all of it so when they go to the bathroom they are planting new life in the forest so it's a little gross but is very important for the health of the rainforest hi and parrots yeah. are very, very smart. You can hear Harley's here talking a little bit. Um, for parrots, talking for them is just mimicking. Right. So they will mimic human voices. They usually say things that are said with a lot of emotion, um, things like that. So they get very excited and things that are um, reinforced. Other than that, they do talk a lot because they do want to communicate with their flock. Hello, I am Snoozer. Good girl, Sky, what do you think? Aw, oh, you're beautiful. Stay tuned as we check in with the library. Thank you for tuning in to Checkers TV today. I'm so glad you all did. I really enjoy it myself. Here are just a few reminders of events that we have coming up here at the library. On Wednesday, July 21st is another episode of Unicorns Break the Cage. Are unicorns real? Come and find out. This event is for kindergartners through fifth graders. We will do an animated story as well as some science experiments, and we would love for you to come to that event. On story time, which is Thursday the 22nd at 10 a.m., it's all about animals in the tropics. Of course, I'm not standing in the tropics right now. It was way too hot today to do that. And this is for ages three and up, and it starts at 10 a.m., and if we have more than 10 kids sign up, we will do another one at 11 a.m. So call or email us today to sign up. You can sign up on our website or you can call us at 804-580-5051. And don't forget about your make and take bags. Aren't these cool? You can pick these up and you can actually take these home and make the crafts that are in them. We have them for preschool and elementary age students and they're available to pick up here at the library. If you're in eighth through 12th grade, Sign up for our Murder Mystery Night, Dining with Dewey, at 5 p.m. on Friday, August 13th. We can only sign up 13 people and there's already seven slots gone, so be sure you get your spot today. Help us solve the mystery, who was murdered, win some prizes, and get some free food. It's going to be a fun night and we'd like you to be there. As always, there's still more Read to the Dogs opportunities and story times to come. So be sure to check out our social media sites, our Facebook page and Instagram, and our website for the most up-to-date information. Thanks. See you soon. Well, Snoozer, I'm certainly glad we got to meet a real gorilla today and all the other amazing animals, just like the parrots. Super intelligent animals, and it's really unfortunate that gorillas are endangered. But because of that, it is so important for us to check out books at the library and learn more about them. Fictional stories and non-fictional stories give us a great appreciation for animals, and it makes us want to take care of them more and do anything we can to play our part in keeping them around forever. Yeah, I'm happy we saw them too. Now we get to read about them. Hey, Zat! Are there any other books for us to read? Zot the Robot at your service. Today's selections are Alex the Parrot, No Ordinary Bird by Stephanie Spinner, Little Beauty by Anthony Brown, The Mixed Up Chameleon by Eric Carl, My Colorful Chameleon by Lenny Roberts, Slow Slow Sloths by Bonnie Bader, A Little Book of Sloths by Lucy Cook, Curious George Book Series by Margaret and H.A. Ray, Books Featuring Tropical Animals, Goodbye. Thanks, Sot. And next time, we're going to go on another amazing reading road trip. Hey, that's my line.